The undersea environment is one of the most inhospitable places on earth. But for the clearance divers of the Royal Australian Navy, this is their workplace. The very nature of military diving operations is extremely hazardous, which is why the RAN are so serious about training and safety. After deep diving operations, there may be a requirement for divers to complete their decompression stops on the surface rather than underwater. For this to happen, a recompression chamber must be available on site. The Navy operates the locally manufactured Cowan Two-Man Recompression Chamber, or RCC. This can be transported to remote locations where diving operations are being conducted. The RCC can also be used for treating diving-related medical conditions such as cage, barotraumas and decompression illness. It consists of two main modules, a cone-shaped recompression chamber weighing 575 kilograms and a cylindrical transfer lock weighing 650 kilograms. There's also a skid in which the modules are secured and the air and oxygen banks and hoses. The RCC can accommodate two personnel, a patient and an attendant, whilst the transfer lock has space for a further two personnel. The lock is generally used to take medical specialists or attendants down to the same depth as the RCC and then back to the surface again. The chamber can provide an unlimited supply of air and oxygen due to the secondary backup systems incorporated in their design. This also adds another level of safety should one of the systems fail. Other features include CO2 scrubbers, which absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in each module, a medical lock for transferring items whilst the RCC is under pressure, radio communications between the operator and the patient and attendant, and external monitoring of the oxygen and CO2 levels within the RCC. Assembling the recompression chamber and bringing it to immediate notice can be done in as little as 30 minutes. Begin by wheeling the modules into a position where a crane can lift the components either onto a truck, a boat, or in this case to a wall where diving operations are taking place. Place the skid in position and lift the RCC module with the crane. Remove the wheels, lower the chamber onto the skid and slide it into position. Insert the securing bars to lock the module into the skid. Remove the strong back from the door and the protective cover from the NATO flange. The same procedure is carried out for the transfer lock. Remove the wheels and the strong backs and lower the module onto the skin. Push the modules together, ensuring that the NATO flange mates correctly. Rotate the flange locking ring until the spring-loaded pin is engaged. Next, Fit the air banking connections to the primary and secondary air cylinders. Then fit the regulators to the O2 cylinders. Feed the connection hoses under the chambers and connect the couplings to the fittings on the RCC, the transfer lock and the gas cylinders. To check the system for leaks, pressurise all of the hoses and pour soapy water over each of the connections. To prepare the chamber and transfer lock internally, Connect the bibs masks to the manifolds in both of the modules. Next, fill the CO2 absorption units with the recommended absorbent and its The system is now ready to commence the pre-dive checks. One member of the team reads through the checklist in the operating instructions while another physically carries out the checks. First, the communications and gas analyzer modules are fitted and tested. Next, the various gas valves on the operating panels are set to ensure that they're in correct position in accordance with the tables. On completion of external checks, one member of the team enters the chamber to conduct the internal checks. This involves connecting the bibs masks and checking the various internal valve settings. Before divers can enter the RC to check the correct operation of all systems. 
Open the valves on the primary and secondary air cylinders and set the regulators beneath the RCC and transfer lock to 12 bar. Next, open the valves on the primary and secondary O2 cylinders and set the regulators on the cylinders to 7 bar. Breathe oxygen from each of the bibs masks for 10 seconds and ensure that the bibs are not free flowing. With the RCC empty, seal the door and dive the chamber to a depth of 5 metres. Once satisfied that all systems are operating correctly, travel the chamber to the surface and reopen the door. The RCC is now at immediate notice. We'll now look at a scenario where a diver has surfaced after a deep dive and requires decompression. After exiting the water, the diver is undressed and enters the RCC with an attendant. The internal door is closed and the diver is fitted with a bibs mask to allow him to breathe pure oxygen. The chamber is dived in accordance with the table used, in this case to a depth of 12 metres. The airflow meter is then adjusted to 0.83 litres per minute. The diver and the attendant remain in the chamber and conduct the recompression stops in accordance with the specified dive tables. On completion, the chamber is brought to the surface and the diver and attendant exit the RCC. Dive me again, well. Dive me as well. The chamber can also be used to treat divers who are suffering from a range of diving related medical conditions. To set the chamber up for the treatment of an unconscious diver, unclip the stretcher support in the RCC and pull it across to the centre of the chamber. Then, Fit the removable slide rail in the transfer lock. In this scenario, an unconscious diver has suffered medical complications several minutes after completing a dive. A specialist trained in underwater medicine assesses the patient and a hyperbaric doctor is also a consultant. In this case, okay, guys, the medical team determines the that therapeutic treatment is required. The patient is placed on a stretcher and transferred into the RCC. The medical specialist enters the chamber, closes the door and fits the patient with a bibs mask which allows him to breathe pure oxygen. The chamber is dived in accordance with the recommended therapeutic table and the medical team monitors the patient's progress. Treatment times will obviously vary depending on the condition of the patient and the type of medical disorder he's suffering from. This DVD has given you a brief insight into the operation of the two-man transportable RCC. It's up to you to ensure that you know how to operate the system correctly. Your life and the lives of your mates could well depend on it.